said he was qualified, so he whipped his ass, you know, while he was in there. Now, uh, the other stuff that happened, uh, it went down the way it did, man. about Wrestlemania 5 it feels right to talk about a Wrestlemania around this time of year everyone's getting hyped up for this big special show and I'm kind of looking forward to this year's Wrestlemania I can't lie but let's talk about a Wrestlemania in my opinion it is very underrated Wrestlemania 5 some very good matches on this card for me I did not enjoy the venue I gotta say kind of felt a bit drab and a bit bleh having it in the same place two years in a row I don't think they've ever done that again so I guess that's something they've never held back to back Wrestlemania's in the same venue I don't believe they've ever done that I might be wrong I'm, if someone wants to tell me I'm wrong please do down below but let's kick it off with the matches and starts off with quite a drab match let's have it right Hercules versus King Haku um, I've got to say, the King gimmick back in the day wasn't a massive fan of it. They tried their best to try and get it over. I suppose it was because of the popularity Jerry Lawler had. And let's have it right, there's only one King in professional wrestling and it is Jerry Lawler. No one can do it better than him. And no one ever will. King Haku, less said the better. Very, very, very talented guy, but I, he just didn't suit the King gimmick, did he? And this match was hard to watch. Story heading in Hercules was once managed by Bobby the Brain Heenan, was once a member of the Heenan family. Um, if I remember correctly, Heenan tried to sell his contract to the Million Dollar Man. Hercules was having none of it. And he turned on Heenan and the Heenan family. And he feuded most of his time since then with people from the Heenan family. And this was another one where Hercules was someone who was never really going to like hit the heights. He was not that talented. He was quite a, he was a mus muscle guy, really. Um, his promos weren't all that. There was nothing really to write home about here with Hercules Hernandez. Um, but he won the match. It was what it was. Never going to go down as one of the best opening matches in WrestleMania history. Um, the second match on the card, the Twin Towers versus the Rockers. And you just want to watch this match for, to see Shawn Michaels get his head taken off by Akeem. Um, a vicious, vicious clothesline. I like how they finish this match, how the boss man catches. I believe it's Shawn Michaels. It might be Marty Jannetty. I can't remember which one it was, but he catches him in midair and power bombs him. It's absolutely sickening finish. And then Akeem Splash, one, two, three. Um, went eight minutes, which was quite surprising for the for the their twin towers. I thought the Rockers got quite a got a lot of offense in. Um, they were kind of like lower down on the tag team division, and there were a lot of tag team matches on this show. And I'll talk about the tag team division in a bit because next up it was Brutus Beefcake versus Ted DiBiase. Um, who was the newly crowned or self-crowned million dollar champion after he couldn't win the world title. He made his own title, but the title wasn't on the line. He very rarely defended that title. Um, this was a decent match, actually. Um, went to a double count out, I believe. Yes, a double count out. And looked like they were going to continue the feud, but it didn't really go anywhere. This wasn't something that anyone was really getting behind. DiBiase really had lost a bit of heat since he tried to buy the title by the Rumble. He was kind of dwindling here, in my opinion. Twiddling his thumbs against someone like Brutus Beefcake, who was not really ever going to hit the heights of any, anything interesting. So we move. About 10 minutes for a double count out. Bit of a waste of time, really, in that match. Another tag team match. And it's the Bushwhackers against the Rougeau brothers. And you've got to admit, the Bushwhackers were over. I forgot how over they actually were. They got a reaction, which is more than some tag teams do today. They got a reaction. People used to do their dance coming down to the ring. Um, 
weren't great in the ring. Let's have it right. Their finish sucked balls. But somehow they got a win here against a team who I thought were very underrated. Could have done a lot more with in the Rougeau brothers. Um, I was very surprised the Bushwhackers got the win. In an okay comedy sort of match. You knew what level the Bushwhackers were at really. In this tag team division. And there were some very good tag teams in this division. Um, but we move anyway to, for another very good match. A sleeper match. But it only lasted about five minutes. I could have watched this match go at least 15. It was that good. I would have loved to have seen more of Mr. Perfect. Versus the Blue Blazer. Owen Hart. Like you don't see like the stuff Owen Hart was doing then, you just didn't see it back then. And Mr. Perfect, yet to get himself aligned with the Heenan family, running solo. You see him hit the perfect plex for one of the first times. Picks up a win. And you can tell big things in his future, Mr. Perfect. You can tell he's going to be a big deal in the WWF. Next match was the tag team titles on the line in a handicap match. And I felt Fuji in the match kind of ruined it. It was strange how this all came about at Survivor Series with Fuji turning on Demolition and them turning babyface and the powers of pain turning heel at the same time. You didn't really see that sort of thing, a double hit, a double switch. Um, the only other one I can really think of is Bretton Austin. You didn't really see it and... Demolition were over as a tag team. I felt this should have just been a straight up tag match. It probably would have been better, but the powers of pain were hard to watch, man. This was hard to watch. Um, Demolition were a good team, but they needed good wrestlers to, to work with. Um, if you want to watch any good matches with Demolition, go and watch them versus the Brain Busters. They, there's a few couple of matches which are really good. Uh, go and watch them with the Heart Foundation. That's a good match. Um, but here, it was okay. Nothing great. Demolition should have won the match, and they did win the match. And you don't really see the powers of pain after that. They're pretty much done with, dealt with, finished. They kind of split up the Warlord and the Barbarian, and they go their separate ways. Um, a match that was pointless and I didn't see the point to it and it was just a waste of time three minutes of my of our lives that we'll never get back um, Dino Bravo versus R Rugged Ronnie Garvin what a pointless match that was it was just awful Dino Bravo sucks sucks or sucked I suppose because bang bang he's gone um, we move anyway to what I thought was a very good tag match between the Brain Busters and Strike Force. Let's have it right. The 80s were the best time for tag team wrestling. Uh, it was a golden generation from about 86 for me to the end of the 80s. You had some fantastic teams in the WWF in 89 had some of the best. They had the best tag team division. The Heart Foundation, they had the Brain Busters, Demolition, Strike Force, the Bulldogs had only just left. Um, there was just so many. The Rockers, there just so many good teams. And even in WCW or NWA back then, you had the likes of the Midnight Express, the Rock and Roll Express, the Road Warriors. Just so many great teams, man. You just don't see it anymore, like... It was actually a conversation back then who was who was the best tag team. Nowadays you can like it's an argument like between one or two teams. Back then you had about five, ten to ten teams who you could say legitimately, this team is the best tag team in the world. But for this match, the Brain Busters versus Strike Force, you saw the emergence of the model Rick Martel, the split of Strike Force, and you didn't really see that back in the day. You don't I can't remember a match where a tag team split at WrestleMania and he left his partner high and dry. And it was the emergence of Rick the model Martel and the rest is history. 
Good win here for the Brain Busters. They're building themselves up here to go and challenge for those tag team titles and eventually win them. Um, I enjoyed their time in the WWF. I really, really did. I thought they were a good team. It was just a shame it didn't last longer. Next was a singles match, and I enjoyed this story, this feud, this build-up to this. Jake the Snake Roberts versus Andre the Giant. My only problem was John Studd getting involved in this match. The geezer just won the Royal Rumble. You can go and check out what I thought about that. And this is what they do with him. Stick him in the middle of a match that he had no place being involved in. He didn't need to be there. He was just in the way. Jake Roberts wins by the DQ because Andre tippets his hands on John Studd. It was just a bad match. Just didn't uh, fit with what was a really good feud with Andre and Jake. I enjoyed everything they did where Andre played up to being like petrified of Damien. And yeah, I thought they could have done a lot more here than what they did. John Studd getting involved just ruined it for me. Heart Foundation against Greg the Hammer Valentine and the Honky Tonk Man, Riverman Blues. And yeah, Heart Foundation, of course, they're going to win this. Great, another great tag team. Like I said, the tag team division was on fire. Um, Intercontinental Championship match, probably... You could argue that this probably was the Ultimate Warrior's best ever match. I mean, maybe at WrestleMania 7, him and Savage have a better match, you could say. But I did like this one here. Rick Rude just carried this. You just saw how great Rick Rude was in this match. Just how damn good he is. Being able to get a match like that out of the Ultimate Warrior. Just phenomenal. Rick Rude was damn good. You just you just don't appreciate you couldn't appreciate it back then as a kid I couldn't appreciate it but going back now you can you can go back and you can watch and you can appreciate how excellent he was and the match he was able to carry Raw Warrior through was phenomenal the right decision Rude winning the title Heenan family deserved a title and Heenan deserved a title in my opinion and he got one here the Intercontinental Championship which was a big fucking deal back then. A big deal. It meant something to be the Intercontinental Champion. Nowadays, I, I can see they're trying to build it back up again with Volta or Gunter, whatever his name is. But prior to him, for years and years and years, it meant absolutely nothing. Vince didn't care about it. It was just an afterthought. It was just chucked on any old face that nobody cared about. But back then... In 89, the Intercontinental Championship was a very big deal. It was nearly up level with the world title. Because for me, this match was just as good as the main event match for the world title. And we'll get to that in a little bit. But right decision putting the title on Rudy definitely deserved the title. And I like the feud between him and Warrior. It lasted for quite some time. Bad News Brown versus Jim Duggan. Less said the better, really. Lasted three minutes, nearly four, and it just... Why was it even on the show? Another match that just really didn't need to be there. Just a waste of time. Talk about a waste of time. Bobby the Brain Heenan versus the Red Rooster. Whoever thought this was a good idea. Why was this anywhere near WrestleMania? 30 seconds it lasted. And it was 30 seconds too long. Red Rooster out there against Bobby the Brain Heenan who had the Brooklyn Brawler in his corner. I suppose if you want to beat a bad gimmick jobber, you take another bad gimmick jobber with you. Like two of the worst gimmicks ever created in professional wrestling. The Red Rooster and the Brooklyn Brawler got mi- got minutes, got time on WrestleMania. 
I mean, you think of all the talent that couldn't get on the WrestleMania card over the years, and these two jabrones got time. Criminal. Absolutely criminal. But we move to the main event. Hulk Hogan versus Randy Savage. The mega powers colliding. The world title is on the line. And this was probably, no, not probably, definitely Hulk Hogan's best ever match. Tell me another one. Tell me another match where he can he delivers. Maybe Austin, maybe against The Rock at 18, but I don't think so. This was far better than that. Savage carried him to a great match. And in my opinion, could you imagine if Savage had won? How much better it would have been. We only got a small taste of Savage as a heel champion. From when he turned on Hogan to WrestleMania. It was only a cut of short like month or two. And he was brilliant. And he was brilliant after he lost the title. But could you imagine him uh, winning this match here? And how much better... He would have been as a champion. A heel savage as champion would have been phenomenal. And we never got to see it. Something I really thought they should have done. It was very easy to do. You had Miss Elizabeth, Miss Elizabeth there. She could have cost Hogan the match. She could have done something. Hogan got distracted by her. Savage took advantage of it as he would have as a heel. And gets the win. Hogan loses because of Miss Elizabeth. Savage rides off into the night, says, fuck you, look, I'm off with my title. Joins up with Sherry, and the rest is history. He moves on to WrestleMania 6, and instead of Hogan and Warrior stinking out the place at WrestleMania 6, we actually have a decent match with Savage and Warrior. That would have been phenomenal. But no, no, that didn't work for him, brother. Hogan got the win, one, two, three, and Hogan is the champion once again. Savage had a great reign as champion. Let's not deny that. He was a very, very good champion. Held the title for a year. It's just annoying, man, that he dropped it to Hogan. Back to Hogan. Where he could have held it for another year and had a phenomenal match with Warrior at six. It would have been so much better. You can imagine that. Oh, how different things could have been. Anyway, like I said, this was a very underrated show. There were some very good matches on there. Hulk Hogan's best match. Ultimate Warrior's best match. Go check it out. Let me know what you felt down below about WrestleMania 5. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Stay lucky.